Hi everybody, Brett back, High Altitude Scale Miling with another sprue review. If you're like me, and you're my age, you build models most of your life, you built the Monogram 148 Scale B24 in many different versions from the 70s to 80s on. You loved it because it was the only one there was in that scale. It had decent interior. But as time goes on, it's gone out of date. It seems dated. It's got more flash on it. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for a 148 B24. A couple years ago, Hobby Boss did a 32nd B24, which was massive, which I have that I have not built yet. But somebody, thankfully, talked them into, or they just knew it, 48 scale B24. I finally got one in. These are available in the U.S. now. They're not cheap. They're about $130 to $150, depending on you get it from. But we're going to take a look at it and see if it's worth that kind of money. Each individual will have to decide that, though. Obviously, I thought it was, because I bought one. So, kit number. Don't see it anywhere, but it's got a length of 430.3 millimeters, wingspan 694.6. 14 and over. Ah, here, you've got a little bit about the bomber. Here, you've got some CAD drawings of it. On the other side, ah, turn this over. You got three marking options. And stuff in Japanese. And the kit number 81774. So I just got this a couple days ago. Haven't opened it, touched it, anything. Had my knife here a second ago. Let me fix my background. Surprised if I didn't drop it on my toe. Oh, here it is. So we're going to open it up. Like many new kids, it's not shrink wrapped unless the distributor shrink wraps it, which they didn't on this one. Beautiful box art. Witchcraft. I'd like to see him get a new set of stickers for Dragon and his tail. Like most Hobby Boss kids, this one does not want to be opened. Very tight fitting box and it's pretty decently heavy. Oops, well, good thing it's mine because I just ripped the box. All right, here you go. Some advertising obviously, the B24 we've got. So I'm not sure if this is a scaled down version of the 32nd. It says all new tooling. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine big sprues. A box with stuff. Foam wrapped stuff. And that's it. So we are going to zoom in and start on the fuselage. I know some of you are as excited to get this as I am. All right, you can see all the beautiful recessed rivet detail, panel line detail. The outside of the bomb bay doors, which you can display open, they'll slide up here. A little bit of flash on there. Don't lose any detail when you curve around. There's no stress skin effect on this. 
turn it over. You've got a lot of your structural detail. Some stuff for the cockpit. Has a full interior, which you won't see much of, but it is there. Keep an eye on these ejector pin marks to see if you'll see them through the windows, because it does have pretty beefy windows. Bombay. And we're off. There you go. The fuselage. I am going to build one of these pretty quick, because I always enjoyed my monogram one. You know, the B-24. A very narrow wing ends. And again, the detail. The recessed rivets, panel lines, access panels. All the way to the slender wing tips. You've got adjustable ailerons, which are right there. And they are molded with the fabric detail. So these are both of the tops of the wings. Very rigid support, because they are so long and narrow. Ailerons are one piece. And let's see if we can find the bottom wings first. There we go. Same great detail. Rivets, recessed panel lines, like venting, wheel wells, access panels. All the detail curves right around front. Obviously, as you can see, it's going to have, you can lower the flaps as well, both sides. Again, very beefy inside structure to help keep them straight. Now we're going to start getting into some of the other more detailed parts. I imagine we're going to see a few of these nationals in Wisconsin this year. Looking forward to that. So I believe those are your Bombay doors, your flaps. Again, same recessed rivet detail. Places for your superchargers. Look to the smaller details. Not sure what they're for. I believe that's your elevator for your big tail section. Because it's got the twin tails. Flip it over and look inside the doors. Yes, you got some ejector pin marks to clean up. Pretty shallow, so it won't be too difficult. And those might actually be the flaps, not the uh, tail section. Elevator. Because it seems awful long for it to be the elevator. But we'll find out. Okay. Here we go. Here's the tail section. And the center elevator. On one sprue. Sprue J and H. So, there's your tails, your rudders. Again, excellent rivet detail. They took their time with this. Made it look right. And there's your elevators in your tail section. Good raised detailing here, here, and the rivet detail. So those can be lowered as well. So every control surface is positionable, which is a good touch. I do not remember if they were on the Ravel one. So. As Hobby Boss Trumpeter do, 
some delicate parts while wrapping this bone. So we are going to find the end of this bone so I can rewrap it. So what's wrapped under here is, there you go, those delicate parts there in the instrument panel. Probably decals for the instruments, but there's going to be PE coming along, 3D sets printed, wheel hubs, some sparring, some bulkheads. Remember, it's fully detailed interior, they say. <clears throat> so it looks like these four parts here don't have ejector pins on either side of them, which is good, whatever they're for. Same with these two here. Bunch of the small parts, looks like an oxygen tank. I'm not sure what those actuators are for, maybe the doors, the Bombay doors. So let me get this covered back up. Back in the bag. If a kid as pricey as this, you want to make sure you're protecting things like they did. And it's not just this kit, the price of all the kits is going up, in case you haven't noticed. Inflation's hitting everywhere. Or not, depending on you talk to. Okay. Here we've got patching screws, which have the props, the superchargers. Matching sprues, there's your props, your engines, superchargers, tops to the engines, not a lot of detail, but Edward will probably come up with some very nice detailed engines. There's your props, no burn lines, no real flash, looking pretty good. Matching screws, gonna get put back. like some flooring, some decking. This is probably the roof, the wing spar for sure, but it's definitely going to be over the Bombay. So some of this might be the roof to the Bombay. But again, nicely detailed. Bulkhead it is. We've got another bag here, covered in foam. Oops, sorry about that. This one has matching sprues in it that are covered in foam. And I can see why. These are bombs, palm parts, uh, control stick, some tanks, there's a gun, does not have a hollowed out tip, I haven't seen many guns in this, but there's at least two in this one, so there's all your bomb parts, you're going to assemble them, piece by piece, one piece guns. Two of these, which is sprue T. 
again, wrap it back up. Protect all those tiny, delicate parts. Okay, that's all these sprues. Let's see what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? The box. There we go. More interior parts, interior parts, interior parts, wheels, interior parts, interior parts, PE parts, decals, and a mask set. Nice job of separating them there, heavy boss. So, these over here and get started. So, one of these, because they're all small. You got your bomb racks, a bunch more detailed parts, antennas, doors, ammo boxes, landing your doors, piping. So that one. There's some more guns for the turrets, the landing gear legs, parts for the turrets, they're going to be very detailed turrets, uh, the fender for the front wheel, or it could be the back wheels, no, it's a front wheel. Look, those guns are not hollowed out either because they're attached to the sprue. So, very detailed turrets. Nice front leg, uh, maybe not be the front leg, but nice leg. Okay. Let's so get another one of those pieces matching ones. Nope. Back in the box. Looks like a lot of flooring and bulkheads, as you can see. Again, nice detail. So it looks like you're going to have the floor from the front to the back. Full interior, they said. And then bulkheads. Bottom side, so it's not really going to matter. But this looks like the very back of the floor here. Where the tail gunner will go. And this one. Which contains the main landing gear legs. Parts for those. Ladder. Uh, walkway, I believe. Probably over the bomb bay. Some boxes, radios, control boxes. Slide molding right there for the landing gear parts. I don't see a real burring. There's not much to worry about. There's doors for the landing gear. Fortunately, I don't see injector pin marks inside those doors. Okay. One more that came out of the little box. It's got a little piece of foam around it. Why look at that. Very delicate parts. Some couple more guns. So lots more interior parts. They said fully detailed. For some reason these look like doors of some kind that are going to swing open, but we'll just look when we see in the instructions, shall we? 
when we get there. Let me pick this back up. Okay, clear parts. That one I was able to save the tape on. There you go. I like those clear parts. You can see through to my dry hands without any distortion. Nice. Very nice. But Trumper and Hobby Boss have always had good clear parts. Well, not always, but most of the time. Take that back up and put it away. And this one is a bag with the rest of the clear parts. Again, raised framing, so it'd be easier to mask. And I said it comes with a mask set. Turrets, side gun positions, that's what those doors were for. Tail gunner, top turret. Again, so clear you can see all my dry fingers through there. Sorry, I just had doing snow removal. Forgot to wash my hands. Uh, so, another well, nice set of clear parts. Masking is going to be fun. Good thing they gave you a mask set, which they seem to be doing more and more. PE parts for the engine. I think there's just, yep, there's just one in there. So you get some engine parts and some other parts. I'm not sure what they are. Okay. Here we have decals and mask set. This is a fully die cut mask set. And it looks to have 78 pieces on there. Wonderful addition and it's it's like a more textured version of Tamiya tape. Decals. Nice looking. There's your instrument panel decals. Your call outs. Your bomb markings. Overexposed. Let's see. Susie baby? Shishi baby? I don't know. But you know there are a bunch of 48 scale decal aftermarket decals that's available because the monogram has been out so long. So I'll put that in there. And put that in there. It's next to it. And wheels and ammo belts. Tires and ammo belts. Some of you aren't gonna like it. Pretty hard rubber tire for the front. Hollow. Pretty hard rubber tires for the rear. The main gear. Nice tread. And then you got some rubber ammo belts. You can paint up and move them around as you need to. So, some will hate it, some will love it. But they're there. Back in the bag. Back in the box. Clean up all this stuff. And we move on to the instructions. Let me get some water here. So, let's get on to the instructions. Your warnings, your please read first, your um, symbols for what you need to do. 
pre map. There's where you start. Color call outs, interior green, PE parts, neutral gray for the bomb bay. All the interior parts for this side. No color call outs, but I'm presuming they're all gonna be black. I could be wrong, so check your references. Interior parts for your uh, same side. Your guns, your ammo belts. I, personally, would see if you can set these in a way where you can slide the guns in from the outside because I've broken so many barrels by putting the guns in. So again, the only color color so far are the main ones for the interior parts. So, your piping and your wiring, there's no color callouts for. But your gray and your green. If you have a monogram one of these laying around, they have great instructions with color callouts. Use that. And the second part of finishing the right side of the fuselage. So here you go, you're working on the floor. This looks like the Bombay area. Yeah, because there's your, some of your racking. There goes your main bomb racking and your doors. Your front wheel looks like it's gonna have to go in before assembly, so you have to be careful of that when you're painting. Maybe not, because this looks like it slides into one hole, so you might, except for this part here. But if you can attach this part here and then attach it later and just leave it loose inside, that might work. It's going to be up to you to check it for yourself to figure out if that's right. It's pretty complex front gear, too. And then you've got flooring going there. And your instrument panel with your decals, your seats. There's some... Color call it's there for some reason. There's a black, a black, an interior green, more interior green, decal, olive drab, flat back. So some of this is getting color call outs. Your whole thing for your seat, all the different colors for that. So this whole section's got color call outs. Even for your bombs. Wood brown. Then you're sliding that whole floor section into the right side of the fuselage. Now, maybe you want to build it up in sections and then attach it after you put it in or make it a loose fit to see how it fits first. Test fit, remember, test fit, test fit. That's a huge section to slide in there. And then line up, you gotta put all these other parts in there. Well, at least it's got all the color call outs. Well, some of the color calls. See, this one's got all of them for the guns. I would use gun metal, not steel. But that's me. So you're still working on the, you know, there's where your bottom turret's going to go. So you're still working on the right side of the fuselage with all that interior flooring. And then you're going to have to turret. Multi-piece turrets. Alter it for the bottom. Your mask, showing you how to put that on. And then, of course, you're going to put it in place. So you have to be careful of it. Then you're sliding the whole thing together with the wing spar. And showing you where to put all the masks and such. Telling you to put some weight in here. I can't read it, but it does say weight. Looks like they gave you a space for the weight, too. Nice touch. Open bomb bay doors, closed bomb bay doors. You have a choice. More masking. 
And this is the bottom of the aircraft. So the ball turret's recessed. And I'm assuming it slides out when they go into combat. I'm going to watch another. It's been so long since I watched that B-24 documentary. i have to watch it again. Upper turret. Windshield, antennas, which I would leave for last. Masking again. No cement for the ball turret on top. Or the upper turret on top. Not a ball turret. Here. You're working on the landing gear base, which is one section you're going to slide into the wing, the upper wing. Had your flaps, your ailerons, your engine with the turbo or superchargers on it. Install those first before you put the wing cover on or the engine cover on. Landing gear. This for sure can be added afterwards since the wings are already assembled before you do it. You're adding your engines. With your PE detail. It's going to be a long review. All right. Same thing. Just repeat for the other side. Repeat for the other side. Tail section. Pretty easy. Wings going on. Props and tail going on. And you're done. This is where you end. Now, they do give you exterior color call out for witchcraft. And here's your colors down here. And different manufacturers. Looks like only Mr. Hobby's got all of them. Or Tamiya does for most of them. And then if you want to do the other two, this one, which seems to be a slightly lighter shade of green. And the all metal natural one. And then your color collapse again. And there you have it. You have yourself a brand new tool, 148 scale, B24, J Liberator, which is so big, barely fits on the mat. Oops, did it again. There you go. So I'm saying all you guys built the monogram one, if it's within your budget, Build one and tell me what you think. Sit your ass right here at this bench. Your bench, not mine. Build one of these beauties. Beauties. That's what I'm saying. It looks really nice. Definitely an improvement over the monogram one. But the nostalgia and the love of the monogram one will never go away. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass at the bench and build a model. And enjoy your hobby. Bye for now.